Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. And in this Zep Swing Experiment video, we are going to talk about a flat bat at landing may be dangerous to ball exit speed and decreasing time to impact. The subhead Zep Swing Experiment. Here's a quick way to fix a flat bat at landing and why. So the question I asked before doing the experiment is, how does a flat bat at landing affect bat speed, ball exit speed, and time to impact? So I used a couple pieces of equipment to track the swing metrics. I used a Zip Labs baseball app to track bat speed, hand speed, and a couple other things. And I also used a pocket radar ball coach to track ball exit speed. So you can go, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go into the about section underneath this video and click on the link there to view and read more on the background research. We're not gonna really go into that here in this video. Uh, but also there's a link there in the post. If you click the link below the video, there's a link in that link to watch a video on how to fix a flat bat at impact if you're interested. My hypothesis for this experiment in support of the background research that I just talked about, I'm hallucinating that we'll see a bump in bat and ball exit speeds in addition to a reduction in time to impact when we have more of a vertical bat at landing. I also think that we'll see a more positive move in the barrel's attack angle, so a much better launch angle or attack angle with the bat. Now, a couple things before we get into, we're gonna watch a video on, you can see the pictures here of Carlos Gonzalez versus Cody Bellinger. We're gonna look at the, the difference in flat versus vertical, which you see over here on the left is more of a flat bat, more of a vertical bat over here with Cody Bellinger. But before I get there and the actual swings that I took, and looking at those side by side. Wanted to just give you just a couple equipment things. You can also click that link directly below the video if you're watching this on YouTube to get more information on what we used for equipment wise for the experiment. But these are some of the things, use a backspin T to hit from, flip camera to, to record the video, 33 inch wood bat, Zep, and the pocket radar I mentioned earlier. On the setup, you can again, you can read this at the link, but one thing I wanted to draw your attention to was this part here. So the two tests in the swing experiment were counterbalanced, which consisted of eight blocks of 25 swings done in the following order, A, B, B, A, B, A, A, B. And you can look at that. I actually have a, a link to a Google Doc where we track the ball exit speeds, and it explains what these, uh, are. So a flat bat at landing was letter A, basically flat bat at landing, or vertical bat at landing was letter B. So we took 200 swings total and completed the experiment 100 per test, 100 swings per test. We The first day was we completed 150 swings total, so 75 each, and then we did 50 the last day, which is a week later, 25 each. All right, before we get to the data collected and what we had, let's take a look at a couple swings, one being a comparison of Carlos Gonzalez and Cody Bellinger, and then let's look at the swings, the two swings that I used for this experiment, and then we'll get into the data collected and the the analysis and conclusion. Okay, so you can see Carlos Gonzalez over here on the left. This was actually taken in 2014, from a 2014 video, hit a home run. And Cody Bellinger over here on the right. This is a more current video, 2017. And a couple things that you're going to notice here in the freeze frame, if I go any earlier than this, then you're gonna see that happen. So in the freeze frame, they're both synced, both swings are synced to the same point in the swing, both lefties. I know you right-handed coaches out there, it's gonna drive you nuts, but I wanted to show apples to apples comparison here. And you can see the difference in the bat flat at landing versus the bat more vertical at landing. What I want you to understand is that some of these big leaguers, although maybe one thing, one chink in their armor, they are succeeding despite ineffective mechanics, not because of them. So this isn't something over here that I would teach my younger hitters. Uh, quite the contrary, most of my younger hitters that are doing this are not getting away with it or aren't even getting a fraction of the results that Carlos Gonzalez is getting. What I teach my hitters is more of this more vertical barrel at landing. But we see that both swings are on similar ball heights. I don't know about depths, but similar ball heights, about maybe knee or so if they were standing straight up and down. 
you see a couple different approaches with the knee action. You see Bellinger using his knees a little bit more than Carlos Gonzalez. But the point is, is that you see more of a flat barrel at landing than you see more of a vertical barrel at landing with Cody Bellinger. So let's take a look at the swings that I used for this experiment. For this experiment, I wanted to control whether the barrel was vertical or it was flat. So what I did was I broke the swing into a couple steps. The first step was getting to landing, which is the position you see here. So I would stride, get to my landing position, pause for two seconds, make sure everything was in order, and then I would take the swing. And these are the differences. You see the flat, more flat barrel angle, more of the Carlos Gonzalez style versus the more vertical bat at landing like the Cody Bellinger, but obviously from the right side. So this is what the swing basically looked like. Let's take a look at how the ZEP swing experiment turned out. Okay, so here's how the experiment turned out. So the first screenshot here of the ZEP, I put together both the 75 swings over here on the left and the 25 on the right of the flat bat at landing swings. So day one, we got 75 swings in. Day two, we got 25 swings in. And the averages of the averages <clears throat> can be seen down here. And again, you can see this in a little bit more detail uh, if you click the link directly below this video, if you're watching this on YouTube, just scroll on down and there they are. So the averages of averages, we had 76 mile per hour bat speed at impact, 26 and a half miles per hour hand speed max, 0 0.209 seconds time to impact, negative 30 degree bat vertical angle at impact, and a, a positive eight and a half degree attack angle. So that was again for the flat bat at landing swings. For the vertical barrel swings, <clears throat> days one and two, same thing, 25 swings on day one and a week later, 25 swings. We saw averages of averages down here, 76 miles per hour bat speed at impact, 27 miles per hour hand speed max, 0 0.206 time to impact, 30.5 degrees or negative 30.5 degrees bat vertical angle at impact and a positive eight and a half degree attack angle. So if we, oh, you can also too, you can click the link here in the article to bring up the ball exit speed Google document where we were tracking all the ball exit speeds. And the findings we got there, if you were to click over and see, the average bat speed and impact for the flat barrel at landing was 79.01 miles per hour and the barrel, the vertical barrel at landing average ball exit speed was 81.08. So that is a 2.01 boost with more of a vertical barrel at landing. Data analysis and conclusion. So we saw no change to bat speed at impact between the two swings. We saw a 0.5 mile per hour boost to hand speed max when holding a vertical barrel at, at landing. We saw a 0 0.003 second reduction in time to impact when holding a vertical bat at landing. We saw a plus one and a half degree increase to bat vertical angle at impact when holding a vertical bat at landing. We saw no change to the attack angle and we saw a 2.01 mile per hour increase in ball exit speed when holding a vertical bat at landing. So based on the above data analysis, it looks like my hypothesis was proved right when it came to boosting hand speed max, ball exit speed, and decreasing the time to impact, but was wrong when it came to bat speed and impact and attack angle. So and I think the increase in the ball exit speed can be attributed to the decrease in time to impact. Also, last thing before I, I leave you guys and gals, when we see ineffective movement at the big league level, we have to understand that these high level hitters are succeeding despite ineffective movements, not because of them. Make sure we're swinging smarter by moving better. And before I let you go, the hitting performance lab wants to know, did you know that reducing ground balls and swing and miss strikeouts has less to do with hand path and more to do with knee action? Have you ever heard? Finish taller! To drive the ball, you have to uppercut! Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that showed a reduction in ground balls of 27% and an increase in productive balls in the air of 24% over 200 swings without messing with hand path. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.